Chapter 24 Class Assignments Kara I stay behind after the bell, partially to ask our professor about something strange in the syllabus, but mostly to avoid the crowd of people that is our class. Genevieve wastes no time pushing open the doors and heading out, and within a few minutes the others start filing out as well. Blue sits peacefully enough, suffering a curious sniffing from Tula without complaint. Before long, the coast is clear, and I wave goodbye to Professor Otan before Tula can get any more curious. The halls are empty, and I heave a sigh of relief. Great! Now I just need to keep this up for the next five years. We can't go to the common space, but some part of my brain knows it will be worse if we don't. Either way, I'm sure one day won't hurt. There are still plenty of things I need to do before I plunge into that whole war zone. The halls are almost entirely deserted by the time we step out, but that's fine. Just means that there's no one pushing me to the common space. I'm rather shocked that anyone's in the halls. Orientation is supposed to be a full week before the rest of the student body comes in, a week to get comfortable with this confusing campus. But after a second, I realize the difference in their robes. These are graduate students, fulfilling very focused study programs. They've been here a good few weeks before any of us got on campus. I bet they aren't overly fond of the new meat that's making their study areas noisy. They're also my only hope at navigating through this school. I have to risk it. I run after one in storm class robes. Her name is Elassis, and though she does look like she wants to kill me, I think it's really just the way she's used to looking at underclassmen. Either way, she takes pity on me and helps me find my way to the care center. Apparently, it's on the first floor of the tower, and the door is actually pretty close to the stairs. It's a big open space with thick, colorful carpets laid down on top of a shiny wooden floor. There are colorful toys laid out around the room. It's reminiscent of a child's playroom. Not at all the dreary place I thought it would be. Some people have already left their familiars here. There are only a few, but almost all of them are cuddled up on one of the carpets, taking a nap together, except one sleeping against the wall. It doesn't seem so bad. Blue might actually make some friends here, be at ease in the presence of others of his kind. At least he won't have to deal with the political incident I've created. I briefly entertain the thought of emigrating to another country, but I wouldn't be able to move all my plants with me. Best case scenario, I find an abroad program this semester, and hope to the stars that no one recognizes me next semester. But that's probably going too far. And the applications are already closed. There's a bored attendant who's flipping through a textbook, sitting at the front desk of the care center. Yes, sir. I try to pull off a charming smile as I wander up to the desk. I don't want any trouble. If she's the person I'm leaving blue with every other day... I want her to at least think we're nice. Hey, it's my first day here, and I just wanted to come and see the care center. I have a few classes that won't allow my familiar, so they sent me here. She smiles back at me politely and starts pulling some paper out from under the desk. Yes, well, we've got a ton of new folks coming in today, getting their papers signed. What kind of accommodations are you looking for? I bite the inside of my cheek and hope to the stars that this doesn't sound as dumb as it does in my head. Sorry, I actually didn't know that the care center was a thing, so if you could just be a bit more specific. Oh, of course. We offer a lot of different accommodations here. We'll do boarding if you ever want them staying overnight. We have kennels in the back and tether-free or free roam in this room. If you request it, we can even provide grooming services. Is your familiar crate trained? That's, um... I have a momentary heart attack when I turn around and Blue is not next to me. It's only a second of panic, as I realize I can feel him right behind me, pressed almost close enough to touch. He's probably just stressed. A little part of me warms at the thought of him coming to me when he wants a safe place to hide. Yes, Master, I'm crate trained. He mumbles into my back. Despite what he's said, I have to suppress the wide smile that threatens to plaster itself on my face. Stars. Blue's just being too adorable. But, back to the matter at hand. Yeah, he's crate trained, but I'd really like him to be out here with these guys. Just free roam, okay? The attendant has taken notice of the form shielded behind me, but I think she's trying to be tactful and not say anything. She does twist a bit trying to see behind me, though. 
All right, will you require feeding services? There are a bunch of different plans that you can just look over here. She pulls up a specific form and circles a set of boxes with descriptions under them. Just reading over the selections, my gut instinct is to allow the care center to feed Blue and give them blanket permissions. But my pen halts above the box. They won't be feeding Blue actual food. When they say food, they mean that weird kibble or nasty paste. Is there any way... Sorry, I just have a particular feeding plan for my familiar. Is there any way that I can just send him with a box of food from home? Would that be all right? Well, I think it should be all right. Just put down that he's on meal restriction with instruction. It means that he's not allowed to eat here without special permission, but it doesn't actually apply to anything you give him to bring in. I feel like an ass checking that box, but I know I'll feed Blue better than this facility ever will. It doesn't help the feeling that I'm being a dick. Anything else? Just the health forms. I hand over the new file from our last clinic run, along with the whole of Blue's file. I don't really know what she needs, but I'd rather be excessively thorough than be missing something. Unfortunately, even my careful planning seems to not be enough. You're just missing an in-date GYT form. Don't worry, you can get that done just about anywhere. We even have a few places that are associated with the school and can probably get it done before tomorrow if you need it. She hands me a flyer from her desk for a nearby veterinary clinic. I thank her for her time and promise to return tomorrow with the proper forms. It would help if I knew what a GYT form actually was, but I suppose I can just ask the veterinarian. I say farewell to the attendant and hold up the flyer she's given me for the vet before stuffing it in my bag. We'll just have to pop in after class. The hallway is clear. I guess here is as good a place as any. What did you think, Blue? Did you like that place? Every time I ask that, I get a little nervous. Blue sees things a lot different than I do. There are different threats in his world. I'm doing my best to see this world from his perspective, but my imagination has its limits. It, um, the care center seemed very nice, Master. He's hesitant, but I'm not quite sure why. You only have to be in there for the classes that won't let you sit with me. I'm sure you'll love the break from me, especially with all the studying I'm going to be doing. I get a bit cranky when I'm cooped up inside all the time. I try for a smile, but all Blue does is twirl his fingers together and keep his head down. Not that I blame him. My humor's been pretty lacking recently. Blue. I hook my fingers under his chin and force him to look up at me. Tell me what's wrong. I don't know what a GYT form is, Master. I want to be good, but I really don't know how... Blue, I don't know exactly what a GYT form is either. Trust me, whatever it is, we're going to be fine, okay? I'll take care of it. I just need you to trust me. He mumbles something I can't quite hear, but before I can ask, he seems to have already moved on. I'm sorry for what happened in Potion's class and all the talk earlier in the day. He looks ashamed, but I can't for the life of me figure out what he means. Blue, nothing that happened in Potions was your fault. You picked a good seat, so good that other people wanted it too. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? You haven't done a single thing that's bad today. And you certainly haven't been talking, though I wouldn't mind if you did. He does his best to pull away, and I get the idea. I let go of his chin, and he doesn't move any further away. Not... not me talking, Master. I meant... well, didn't you hear the students? I can't help shaking my head before I even find my voice. I hadn't stopped to hear anything my classmates were saying. They... they were... I'm not a good familiar. I, I know you don't know that, but I do, and so do the other students. I was... they were talking behind you, but I could hear them. The words tumble out of blue like a waterfall. I... what? Blue's eyes are different when he looks up at me of his own volition. They aren't mad. Anger would be too direct an emotion. But I can see the fire of rage, even if it is dampened and softened by the tears welling in the corners of his eyes. He's a few inches from eye contact, but it's the closest I've seen him get on his own. I... I'm a pet. I'm not a familiar. I was never from that kind of stock. They, 
They're all laughing at you for choosing a whore to be your familiar. Master, I blew. He shuts up at that, though I'm not sure it's a good thing. I can see the hard line of his jaw where he's clenching it. His ears are twitchy, and I can tell he has more he wants to say. Perhaps it's selfish of me, but I don't want to hear it. I don't think I can. I grab Blue by the tunic and start walking. We need to have a conversation, and it's not going to be out in the open like this. The pointing and the giggling from class takes on a darker connotation. They weren't pointing and staring at me, the new kid. They were picking out Blue. In this crowd of familiars, it is pretty unique for him to be a part of the weak constitution class. I just didn't realize that people would care. The wandcraft room doesn't have anyone in it, and it has the added benefit of being our next class. Blue goes to his knees and starts to ramble the second I've shut the door. Master, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I upset you. I won't do that again. Really, I, I didn't mean to offend you. Master, I didn't mean to cause any harm. I just wanted to let you know. Blue, I'm not angry at you. There's a moment of silence as Blue draws an incomprehensible pattern into the floorboards with the pad of his finger. Y you're not mad? Oh, Blue, I'm plenty mad. It's just at the star's damned classmates of mine. But they haven't done anything wrong. I'm ready to go throttle some of these peers of mine. As it is, I find myself standing over Blue, wondering if it would be better to try and shake some sense into him or scream until he gets it. I bite down on the inside of my cheek instead. He wouldn't benefit from that. I'd just end up scaring him. Oh, and I suppose you have? I... I shouldn't be here. You should have picked a better familiar. One that could get you the respect of your peers instead of derision. I... I don't like the wobble in his voice. He's crying again, but he's not looking at me. I don't know how this got so out of hand. I need to set this straight. You are the one I chose. Are you saying I made the wrong choice? There's a choked noise from Blue that might be the beginnings of a protest. There's a bit of mumbling again, though this time I'm rather certain he's concerned that he offended me. I don't stop to address it. The whole thing was a bit below the belt. But we're too far down this road for me to care about that. I let myself settle on the floor beside him and continue speaking. Blue, nothing they're saying is your fault. It doesn't reflect badly on you. It reflects badly on the people who had you before. Okay? It doesn't matter what my classmates are saying anyway. I'm proud to have you as my familiar. I don't think I could have a better one. Blue's hands are shaking as he leans his whole body closer. Not quite touching yet, just held there in a silent question. Oh, come here. I try to make it as warm as possible, pulling him those last few inches onto me. Blue squirms a little bit, seemingly dissatisfied that there is any space between us, before he settles down on my chest, hands tangling in the fabric of my tunic and legs tangling up with mine. He heaves a few shuddering breaths with his eyes firmly shut, and it's okay that that's all we do for a while. The bell rings and people start filtering into the classroom, my hands tangled in Blue's hair, scratching away, while he's leaning against my leg, purring just low enough so that only I can hear. It's good to feel the vibration in his chest, the sated, warm feeling that tells me he's feeling good. I don't care if the rest of the class is looking strangely at us. Apparently, the wand crafts professor doesn't like familiars in the classroom, but will put up with them if they're well-behaved. I hold my breath and wait for the bell to ring. After this comes my last two classes, familiar training and advanced casting. I doubt I'm going to like this. My only consolation is that this is orientation day. At least we won't be doing anything too intense right off the bat. I wish that thought was more comforting than it is. They're both in the same classroom, at least. We only have to climb the stairs once today. I suppose it's because the same teacher is holding both classes. The top floor of the tower is a lot more intimidating than it was from the outside. Lights filter in from the tinted glass ceiling onto the massive casting circle printed into the middle of the room. Chairs are arranged in a half circle on risers to one side of the room, sort of like auditorium seats. Ryuki Berg is a whole other level of intimidating. He cuts an unsettling figure. 
As skinny as he is, he's incredibly tall. He wears perfectly tailored robes done up in red and black in the traditional robes of a blood mage, and rather obsessively groomed facial hair. He has a Zenzi cub at his side. I only recognize the species because of Shauna. I'm unprepared when he tells us that we'll be doing short command drills with our familiars today. Or rather, I'm unprepared when he starts with me. Everyone's quiet and just watching, and I have no idea what to do. What the hell does he mean? Command drills? What in the hell is that supposed to mean? Blue follows me up to where Professor Bergs told us to stand, and I have to press my hands to my sides to keep them from shaking. Stars, this is a nightmare. Um... Any time you're ready. I can feel the smirk in his voice. I didn't think he chose me on accident, but now there's certainty in my mind. Command drills. The only thing my mind comes up with is the time the clerk at the general store had Blue do a bunch of tricks for a treat. Sit. Blue complies immediately. He's showing attentiveness and making sure his posture is perfect, but he makes it look incredibly natural. Down. He slides onto the floor with a grace that I didn't know anyone could have in that position. Um, speak? Stars above, are you going to have him roll over and present? These are not the commands of a familiar. Step down before you let him make any more of a fool of you. I can't believe you let him act like this in class. Professor Berg crosses the room in an unnatural number of strides and towers over me. My heart is caught in my throat. Yes, sir. I can feel my ears burning, but I motion for Blue to follow me and we head back to our seat. I should have known what to say. I really shouldn't have neglected the readings on familiars. That is, unless you'd like to earn something back on this assignment. The professor's voice is like cold steel. I can feel the knife sliding into my back. What? There weren't supposed to be any assignments today. This wasn't even in the syllabus. Punish your familiar in front of the class, and I'll give you back your participation grade for the day.